Greetings to the one within all. My name is Chance and thou art listening to Innerverse. My guest today is known as Jaffe Ryder, a freebooting sailor of the high digital seas and a freedom loving comrade of ar- comrade in arms who runs an excellent podcast and media collective called World Pirate Radio Podcast Network. Our podcast ships cross one another's paths while sailing the free speech waters of minds.com, which I'm sure you've heard me mention before if you're a listener to the show. Jaffe is a relentless and tireless seeker of the weird and sharer of hidden truths, fascinating stories, and all kinds of odds and ends you won't find anywhere in the mainstream waters. I was recently a guest on his show a few weeks back on episode 77, so if you check the episode notes for this podcast, you'll see all the links to both my appearance there, Jaffe's website, and his Minds profile. If you are on Minds, which I hope you are at this point, I highly recommend checking out his page because there's a gigantic library of groups there that are topic-specific, information-sharing nexuses, and he's founded quite a few. Jaffe, my friend, I've hoped to land you on Interverse for quite some time. How are you doing over there in South Korea? Pretty good, Chance. Thanks for having me aboard. Great. We finally managed to hook up here. So, uh, And just to let people know, the website, uh, WPRPN, it's kind of a World Pirate Radio Podcast Network. Bit of a mouthful, but yeah, when you just kind of boil it down to WPRPN.com, it's a, it's a little easier. So, um, Makes a good hashtag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, and I've noticed that we've actually, I did a search just today, in fact, and lo and behold, our group comes up and uh, as does yours, Interverse. So that's cool that you've uh, you've done exactly what we're kind of, all about just collaborating and reaching out and working together with other uh, projects and, and getting that, that good old synergy going, you know, so way to go. Good stuff. I'm, ha- you know, we're really happy to see that. Good up. Well, yeah, we can't do it without one another really, because uh, we kind of, people like us kind of are going to share um if followers in a sense or share a community, not really, I don't like to think of people as followers. That sounds like work. I like to just think of it as a community and hopefully the more of uh, me and you are, there are out there, the more people are going to see that they can get this type of thing going for themselves and we can have real grassroots media and real uh, truth from people we know and trust instead of from talking heads in suits on television. So uh, I really like your idea with the, the Pirate Radio Network. I think it sounds super cool. I've always wanted to be a pirate radio broadcaster. That's kind of how I see podcasting in the first place. Um, yeah, I think there's going to be networks within networks in our future, um, more than just that one. And hopefully we can share several platforms in the future as we expand our operations. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, there's a lot to be said for this whole business of integration and convergence of platforms. I think that's a really powerful um, concept. So I've been reaching out as as the just network in general uh, via various outlets, including even Twitter, which there's things that it has going for it, really. But uh, even as does, you know, I hate to say it, but Facebook in some ways, too. Although I'm still in Facebook jail again this week, uh, it's like the second week this month that they've they've put me there. So, uh, but the, the suggest a friend feature on Facebook is I think the best one of the best things that they've got going over there, and I really enjoy using that as much as possible in hooking people up, getting people in touch with one another. So uh, now. The history of the show itself, I think you wanted to know a little bit about that, did you, as far as how it all kind of came about and the pirate concept? Uh, yeah, your motivations, like why do you do what you do, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff I'm curious about. I haven't quite got that information out of the episodes of your show that I've checked out. It's always very well focused on the guest and well prepared. And um, yeah, I kind of want to know more about the man manning the ship, as it were. Well, I was Shanghai, actually. That's uh, how it all kind of came about. And just one night from out of the blue, I was at a local watering hole, and I just kind of I, I blacked out. I think I actually I was I jumped basically by a, just a couple of ruffians, you know, more or less. I never did see who it was. Next thing I knew, I woke up on 
the Robin Hood and was told that I had been uh, recruited into service and that my job was to uh, man the mic, basically, that they had been kind of uh, keeping an eye on me for some time and figured that I'd be the best person for the job. Rather than ask me politely, they just decided to take action and, uh, you know, the rest is history. So, but uh, the, basically the way the whole project came about was there was, it was, it was leading up to Christmas of 2015 and I was a part of the Blab video conferencing platform, Blab.im, uh, video conferencing, social networking, what have you. Do you remember that one, Blab.im? It maybe has a vague familiarity in my mind, but not a platform I use. Actually, back then I was not nearly as engaged with these types of communities as I am now. Okay. So what happened was uh, Operation Secret Santa came out from out of a, like this is a uh, out of the blue. Basically, I don't know how to describe it. It was sort of like a visionary concept, of course, and had us kind of. And when I say us, I mean in large part myself, but there's always other people that you uh, cross paths with and and uh, manage to uh, come into contact with. So what happened, though, was we were working on this Operation Secret Santa project, and I can get a little more into that here as time goes on and just the way things have evolved over the few years that we've been working on promoting this. This year will be the third time that we've, pursued this enterprise was working on that. And one day on blab.im from out of the blue, uh, this character popped up and, uh, we got to talk and, and, uh, contact with one another for a while there. It seemed to be a, a good kind of rapport that we had. And it was really interesting too, the way that he kind of just came out of the blue, just very groggy sort of looking disheveled character who uh, seemed to think that this Operation Secret Santa project was quite something. He shows up on the screen. We get to you know, have a bit of a relationship via the web for a short period of time. And then one day we're uh, shooting the breeze and he comes on the other end from out of California was where he was based at the time, uh, goofing around, kind of spoofing the whole pirate thing. <laughs> I, I basically a light bulb went off and uh, in in my mind and i'm thinking well geez this is kind of cool what can you know maybe we can do something with this uh because he was like 805 uh, cali radio it's a pirate radio 805 pirate cali radio that kind of deal because i guess 805 is the area code you have a great uh, voice for that kind of like radio voice thing it's perfect man <laughs> it's awesome yeah 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 thanks uh so, and I like kind of just goofing around myself as well and playing around and just having fun with things. So Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but he was there and he was kind of just uh, goofing around, spoofing the whole thing. And I said, hey, man, that's, that's pretty cool. What, what, you know, let's see, what, what can we do with this? And we just got to do a little bit of brainstorming. And uh, one thing led to another. And we got the uh, our radio podcasts venture sort of launched and uh, he played a his name was Aaron and we now refer to him as AWOL Aaron because he really hasn't been around too much as of late unfortunately we're not really sure what's happened to the guy he does pop up once in a while and contact me via Facebook but I really don't know what the deal is there you know some people are more initiators and starters and they can't necessarily maintain a certain pace of intensity in what they initiate but they are good at getting the ball rolling for others well, that's the whole thing is that without him, I honest to God, truth is that without him, this whole thing never would have come to being, frankly, because I uh, would not have pursued things as much as I have. And it's gone exactly like what you're talking about there with my music as well, which I've done on the side, not so much of as of late, just because of where I'm situated here in, in South Korea, a very isolated location out of Seoul more essential type uh, region to the peninsula. Can you link us so, to some music projects? I actually didn't know you were a musician. I'd like to know more about that for sure. Yeah, the independent songwriter and produced some CDs over the years, just indie kind of grassroots. I've written some tunes that actually I'd like to see. Uh, my The idea is to have larger, more established names cover. And 
to see where we can go. For example, well, I don't want to get too sidetracked here, but like a John Lennon tribute is called Walking on Thin Ice. I, I, in, my, in my mind's eye, I hear uh, Elton John playing. I, we sent a tweet to Elton and, uh, and uh, of course, did not hear back from him at all. <laughs> There's another song that we sent out to Alice Cooper because of his uh, supposed uh, Christian leanings, which he, you know, he, a lot of people actually don't even know about because of his the superficial with this character, the, the the Alice Cooper character that he plays. And that's not even his real name. I forget actually what, what it is, but we, we sent him another song. It's called Love's the Only Weapon. And uh, but, but the whole point, just, just in brief though, before you know going too much down that uh, path, is that you're exactly right. It sometimes takes those initiators, those people who can kind of light a fire under your ass and give you that spark of inspiration to say, hey, you got a great idea there. Let's see what we can do with this. So, yeah, I, I guess the I'm next just, thing you know, you're uh, – way more capable at doing it than you realized. And then it's kind of a, a flow that you get into. Yeah. Yeah. So I just basically, once again, without Aaron, you know, the honest to God truth is that I would not have done what I've, what I, what I have managed to accomplish and produce to this point. Uh, although let's just say after about, he dropped out after about, Oh, I'm, I'm ballparking things now about seven or eight episodes, maybe. And things are pretty dodgy up to that point and pretty rickety. Even there was one show that we did where he had, I was like, oh, I got to go. After 45 minutes, my boss is calling me. And uh, he's like, <laughs> he had something set up off his computer, re- referring to himself as a digital nomad. And uh, that sort of, I'm a digital nomad. It's like, okay, well, we've just done about maybe 40, 45 minutes here. And the show is supposed to be like 90. And uh, you're, you're kind of, you know, we're having to ditch our guests. If you're going to be part of something, like, say it. And, and you know, clearly for the record, I'll do this and I'll do that. And uh, and maybe you can, are you going to take care of that part of things? Okay, we're good to go. And uh, that's the way the network's actually set up. It's very voluntaristic. Uh, you know, the whole principle of voluntarism and people, there's no coercion at all. It's like, if you want to do something, do it. Just tell us and, uh, you know, go for it. Like, for example, we need someone to, tackle the uh, world pirate news end of the operation that we have off of uh, that up there off of uh, WPRPN, all sorts of different things, which for example, Lumio, uh, which uh, that's another platform that, that Emily is Emily Anderson. Of course, uh, some of the shows, maybe regular listeners may have heard her name a time or two. She of course, you know, largely works behind the scenes from what I understand, but I think she would make a great co-host uh, in many ways. So if she ever manages to find the time or, uh, you know, get things straightened out with her schedule and the chance to do that with you or whoever else, that would be wonderful too. But she's over on, on Lumio and it's all about, yeah, allocation and delegation and basically people tackling what they're uh, interested in, frankly. And, I think a uh, lot of people would make good hosts. Um, I actually saw a contest in a group message that we had where Jimmy Church is doing a contest for this month that you can win like a whole podcast studio worth of gear and get some free promotion if you have a good idea for a podcast and you pitch it for the contest. You know what I'm talking I just, about? Yeah, but dude, I just I just shared it with you about 20 minutes ago, I think. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was just texting it to as many people as I could think of that are uh, brilliant and would be great at sharing their yeah. personal truth and uh, messages. So yeah. maybe somebody yeah. cool will win that. I'll link you it in the show yeah. notes here. I think the deadline is coming up within the next couple of weeks. So people are definitely, yeah, people that are interested, definitely going to want to look into that and get on top of things as soon as possible. But the unfortunate thing from my perspective is that I don't qualify because I don't live in the States. So, but I was well, more than, I don't qualify because you are, you already have a podcast also. You already have a show, then you're disqualified. Oh, really? I didn't know that. How about that? So, they want a true up and comer who doesn't have the equipment yet that really needs the help to get started. Well, and you know, Hey, speaking of which up and comers, that's exactly who we're looking for. We're not really, when it comes to booking shows, not really into the bigger, more established names as much as we love and respect them. We are more into just bringing folks, you know, we had you of course, and a number of other uh, minds, 
personalities. So, uh, and just the people that don't really get the exposure that maybe they deserve or, uh, you know, uh, that's what the platform is there for is to give them that opportunity that they can get their voices heard and have their, their, get their stories out there and maybe the information or perspectives that they have to offer on things are a little bit different than what people have, you know, have come across before. So um, that's really essential. But let me just go back to the origins of the show, because as things evolved, uh, I ended up having to take on everything from a technical standpoint. We have no technical producer engineer other than myself. I had a friend who told me about the OBS streaming software and uh, managed to get on top of that and get so that we have a, a slideshow put out every week and whatnot. So things kind of built up and evolved to a, the point where they are now, but there was this dark night of the soul where a Aaron dropped out of the picture and I was sitting there kind of reflecting on things, asking myself, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> this is bullshit. What the fuck am I doing here? Uh, I'm assuming you could drop an F bomb or two on your, on your uh, show as well. I, no, you know. I just bleep them out. No, not really. <laughs> oh so, yeah. You can definitely say whatever you want. Uh, I, I imagine though you answered that question for yourself, right? And you said, um, I guess I'm making a podcast. Yeah, but here's the thing is that I just felt really uncomfortable about the whole thing. Even just and then the playback, listening to my own voice, it was just very kind of, uh, uh, you know, not really the delivery as well, too, because uh, I can relate. Oh, with the stuttering and the uh, the the utterance, just the, the way of just delivering the message or what is it exactly that you're trying to say, man? Make it clear, get to the point, be concise, you know, uh, be direct and on point. Uh, so there's just so much to it that really is uh, something that I've never done as far as this business of what some might refer to as public speaking. It, it, it kind of applies on a certain level that way. It's not like we're here in front of a whole room of people, although in my mind's eye, I'm sort of training and practicing for that possibility and the potential of, of having to uh, do that. So I think it's a fascinating practice and something that I'd never really thought about or even bothered uh, attempting to do until we launched this show. So the playback is quite something we do a lot when it comes to post-production, just because there's a lot of rough edges to things on all fronts, really, both from a technical standpoint uh, with the electronic interference and peaks and where places where the sound drops out and uh, as well as just, you know, people guests who are speaking um, and, and myself too, of course, as the host where there's just too much stuttering or maybe uh, too much of a gap in the conversation or just any number of different things. The point is just to make things smoother and so that it, there's more of a flow to the final end product that we put up on, on Podomatic after we've streamed the live feed out through YouTube, which is very raw, very raw feed that we take. I must say, that. man, it's not... And it's not a small thing to do a live show on a reliable schedule. That's not easy by any means. And I think you actually have a really cool style. I really don't mind any form of speech, be it somewhat meandering or somewhat cir like circular, or even if it's very direct and concise and not very flavorful. Whatever your me method of communicating is, is your method of communicating. And one thing that you inject into your show is a lot of creativity and some kind of whimsical free thinking and it's pretty fun. I actually have enjoyed every episode I've listened to quite a bit. So the post-production quality definitely does show, especially as a person who was on it live and listened back to it and uh, just all around, I think you're doing a much better job than maybe you even give yourself credit for. Well, yeah, we're trying to do a good job for sure. It's just, once again, with the live end of things, it's a real challenge, especially for it is. A, a, a newbie such as myself. You know, they say it takes about, a, I think it's 10,000 hours to master any skill or trade. Have you ever heard that, that, re yeah. that, that uh, reference or that expression? So 
Yeah. And that's basically what I'm looking at here, man. And trying to work on ultimately achieving as a goal. That's how, that's when I set out on this uh, path because of my previous history in journalism, which was strictly on a print basis, just newspapers, mostly no, no real magazine articles of any sort. I have done some blogging too, as well, which we can maybe add that to the show notes if people want to find out a little bit more about my backstory. But uh, yeah, no public speaking or no radio or podcasting at all. However, I had been told repeatedly over the years, man, you know, you've got a pretty good voice. You should be on radio. You should go to Hollywood and do character voiceovers, you know, that sort of thing. I've heard it a time. You know, when, and when you hear these things from people, you get to thinking about it eventually. So I guess the stars were all just kind of properly aligned at the time where uh, with this Operation Secret Santa kind of uh, coming together and, and uh, – you want to talk more about the logistics of what that actually was? Operation Secret Santa? Yeah. What it was, what it is, how it came about. Yeah. It was like a bolt of lightning, just a flash of uh, brilliance, I suppose, that the cosmos seemed to kind of just lay at my at my feet almost, present to me. And uh, it was really quite something. So... Let me just add to this, though, too, because we haven't mentioned his name, but a big uh, shout out to Satori D. I know you had him on your show just like a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was. And we were, you know, reminded the content that you had posted up there in Minds and made sure that it got around. And Fantastic more- conversation. He's uh, another really cool personality over there. And then last week I had Adam Millward, another Minds personality. So. Uh, it's becoming quite a a nice place to harvest interesting intellects to, you know, converse with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, American Act Radio. Uh, we've had Thomas Duder, yourself, of course. We had a Rational Outlaw. Uh, we've got Forty in Talks lined up. Who am I missing? I'm. I'd have to go back and check the schedule. But you get the idea. Uh, there's a lot of as you say, absolutely. And that's what, once again, the kind of people we're looking for. These are the up and comers. These are the new voices that have not really been heard all that much and that deserve to have a chance to find a wider audience. People like Thomas Duder, based out of, uh, <laughs> there's no one neuter than Thomas Duder. So he's, a, he's like a hard rock uh, indie musician based out of Bellingham, Washington and an author as well. We're going to rebroadcast his show and work a little uh, post production on things and get it once again just tighter and you know more polished and concise and stream it out there this uh, Friday night, Saturday, of course, here in Korea. We we're living in the future, you know. So right, it's, uh, it's so yeah, weird. <laughs> I'm quite happy to uh, have spoken to people in so many different countries on my show at this point. It's very cool to have the whole internet at your disposal. Well, I'm, I'm just endlessly uh, amazed and in awe of the way uh, that we had, do have this technology, as you say, at our fingertips and disposal and how we're able to reach out and just have these virtual conversations and meetings. It's in some sense, it's like you're here hanging out with me uh, in the studio. I'm, I'm there with you. Uh, in a kind of spiritual fashion, you know, sitting there in a, in a chair or whatever you have, maybe there's a sofa or something, you know. In a, in a metaphysical sense, we're not even in separate places. Uh, if you look at the universe in the mind first perspective instead of matter first perspective, that would mean we both exist within the same mind, the cosmic overmind, if you will, the, uh, the all pervading infinite consciousness and intelligence that everything is generated from. So really we are just hanging out in the same space. <laughs> it's just uh, the distance is kind of the illusion and the technology is allowing us to cut through that. The illusion, the Maya, that's right. So non-duality, a very important Eastern philosophical concept, one that I've been, you know, somewhat aware of for a few years now. I've actually have a bit of a history as a, what I 
can only describe or what I feel best described to people as a lazy Buddhist of sorts for the past 25 years, although very much a student of comparative thought, religion, philosophy, you name it. So, you know, I'll, I'll take it all in. And uh, it's 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 a question of separating the wheat from the chaff. That's how I see Absolutely. things. Absolutely. The uh, so, exoteric or the outer world versions of any of the major religions are actually concealing allegorical truths and symbols and archetypes that allow you to have the real enlightenment experience, which is the realization that there is such a thing as right and wrong, and there are such a thing as universal laws, and there is such a thing as truth, and you can get in alignment with it and accelerate your own evolution to infinity, or you can be destroyed by resisting it. Well, I believe that we're born with the conscience, most of us, for a reason. Definitely, You can, as you say, tell right from wrong because your conscience, it, it, it basically lets you know. The, the, the old expression, let your conscience be your guide. So uh, now the interesting thing about that, there's some people, of course, they're sociopaths, others are psychopaths. And with those types, either you could uh, speculate they're born with no conscience, which I'm not so sure about. Or secondly, that it's been suppressed because of their the trauma and the environment that they were raised in. You find this a lot within the the elite one uh, percent class. It seems the way that they're bred and their DNA self perpetuates itself through intermarriage and the like. You know, producing future lineages. Yeah, it so, seems like they might want to breed that primary psychopathy that you're born that's that a very small percentage of humans are born with and then to the ones that aren't born with that gene they just abuse it into them and make them secondary psychopaths <laughs> that's unfortunate bomb a village you know uh, murder uh, how many how many people today uh, just with this uh, nice little explosion here uh, in the name of freedom and democracy not a problem <laughs> bombs away you know get, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, definitely quite something and you know worth reflecting upon and uh, talking about. But what I really like to kind of hit on and and ha- address is this Operation Secret Santa business because we do have this coming up. Oh yes, it's really quite critical. It's a major campaign. We hope that we can take it and it with reaching out and connecting with people such as yourself and other podcasters and other talent. We need talent, people that are uh, musicians or comedians, uh, people, uh, storytellers, or folks that maybe have something to offer as far as a service of some kind is concerned, or donations, the secret Santas, people that can give to those who are the have-nots. You know, we, uh, we have the elves, of course, acting as the mediators, although there is no money that we have anything to do with here on our end. All we do is act as mediators and people that uh, would do what we can to uh, match make basically the, the people on the one uh, end of the equation who uh, have something at their disposal. They have some means and way of basically offering just even like a, some, maybe some clothing or food or uh, some small service of some kind. Barter arrangements can be uh, arranged or established, and it's fun. it's done very directly. So, what you're doing as a secret Santa is you're just you're looking to sponsor somebody that's out there in a need. Maybe they need you know there's like a hundred dollars in medical bills or something that they're looking to have covered, or a little bit of food or anything you can possibly imagine. It's it's just on a case by case basis really that things operate. And the elves, the people that uh, that are affiliated in, in a loose sort of way and act as telethon operators, and this is kind of what it is, Secret Santa, Operation Secret Santa, it is a telethon. It has nothing to do with what people, many people traditionally and conventionally think about when they hear Secret Santa, because we're, we're refashioning the mold, as it were, and it's a whole new way of, Basically, we're giving, working on giving rise and giving birth to and reclaiming the secret Santa business and adding the little, you know, the little tag line of the operation into things to the, the the slogan, as it were. 
but you know, it's it's something that's really quite. We've seen growth with over the past each year. It keeps gaining and and expanding and picking up momentum. We've got groups on Facebook now and minds.com and we're sending out the tweets and just you know small kind of incremental victories basically where we have managed to help people in the past with in the first year it was like a washer and dryer set there's a little bit of uh well and there's another story where some kids on the washer and dryer set too by the way went to a lady who she was a single mother with two kids and they were having health issues and whatnot so they got that it was actually delivered right to their house. We do encourage people. That is so cool. Act locally. So yeah, you can go up and just knock on someone's door. Merry Christmas. Here you go. A little bath, a, a basket of uh, food or, or clothes or, or, or anything that they're looking for that they especially need to help them get through the, the holiday season. But one of the things that we really need to do and work on better kind of getting the word out and promoting and seeing if we can, effectively managed to bring on board are these podcasters around the world so that as the world turns 24 seven, we can hand things off like a baton running in a race or a relay kind of deal where it's from one show and one podcaster to the next in each separate time zone. If you follow what I'm getting at and that's kind of seamless kind of smooth transition with this operation secret santa so but the talent as well is really critical now when you do have these people that are as i said comedians or musicians doing either their shows live we actually had this week scheduled to do our third minds world music indie showcase basically but unfortunately just because we're so swamped at the present time the best we're going to manage to do an encore presentation with a little post-production added to things of the show we did with Thomas Duder from a few weeks ago. Him, of course, once again, being the Bellingham based hard rock indie musician and author, quite a character. And some people don't quite get operation secret Santa. They just, I don't know what it is. It's, you know, but it's in some ways, and I hate even to use the term, but it's, uh, what is it? Referral marketing or direct marketing. And I hate to even use the word marketing, that term, because it sounds like, well, you're selling something, but we're not. All we're doing is we're helping people get in contact with one another so that they themselves can decide what it is that they can work out and you know manage to do. That being said, we try to keep it as, as uh, private and low key as possible. That's where the secret end of things comes in. If people who are donating you know, want to be more forthright and reveal their identity, that's fine too. It's totally up to them. But very much this is volunteerism, kind of uh, laissez-faire, just personal choice. You're basically making the decision to, to, to donate and to become engaged and active and, and, uh, and take action and make some good things happen, you know, on, in whatever way that you feel is uh, most effective with a price cap limit estimated you know value of the you know uh, up to about a thousand dollars in price value if you know so like you're i guess if you want you could you could donate or uh, give someone an old car that you got kicking around or something like that for example up to like i said once again you have any uh, more positive stories about the past uh, occurrences well, of this project yeah. Yeah, five hundred dollars in like shoes, African. This, these Africans. What we encourage people to do is act locally and just on the you know helping people in their neighborhood and communities. But there are occasions where people want to uh, take action on a more global kind of international level. And that's fine too. So we had a few hundred dollars that were sent via PayPal, and uh, all these pictures were sent back to us of this uh, an orphanage of these kids in Africa where they managed to get all these shoes via the, the money that was uh, that was sent to them. So that was great. Uh, there's been anonymous donations made in the past of $100 here and there, that kind of deal. The washer and dryer set, as I said, that was another. We've had, well, Halidium Thunder, who we had booked for, it was a 69th show, and it was the 77th 
annual Sturgis motorcycle rally at a Sturgis. I'm not sure still, even if it's North or South Dakota, if you recall during our conversation, we kind of fumbled around with that one too. Yeah. So, I don't know. I still never looked that up. One of the Dakotas. He, he was, he actually made a, a pledge and that's what these are. These are pledges, you know, and you can either, you can match or, or, or beat these pledges. So we can challenge others to rise to the occasion. And, you know, we ourselves, we've got people here on, that we've had on the show, John Ford, Harlan Rose Goida, uh, James Heydrich, and over in Poland, Richard Whipple. These are all people that we've interviewed. Richard, of course, is raw rights over on minds.com. He's kind of, there's a bit of a, a shit storm, I guess, that I'm not sure he's stirred up relief really, and just on his own account or that's sort of arisen around him. People saying that he's a fake and he's a fraud and this and that. But I've seen video footage of where the guy lives. He's actually done a little a, a vlog or two and he goes around and shows people, says, here's my fridge. Here's where I live. It's not that great. Okay, here's the food that we have in the house. And it's like, well, it's barely enough to feed a few mice. You know, his daughter was heavily dehydrated at one point there a number of months ago. And there's a picture that he's got out on minds.com. People can easily see and, uh, you know, read the story and make up their minds for themselves. And that's the whole thing. That's what this is all about. If you get burnt and if you get conned, or to some kind of fraud involved, that's your cho- that's your choice. You've made the decision to engage these people, whoever they are, whether it's you know someone in whatever state around America or or or, or also elsewhere. the karma, cool. like the positive karma of a charitable act, is not taken away just because somebody may have been dishonest about it. It's like if a homeless person is asking you for money, and you say, I will never give you money because I don't know what you're going to spend it on. That's kind of shitty because they really might need to go buy a cheeseburger. Like cheeseburger. They probably shouldn't eat yeah, a cheeseburger. Yeah, but that's you know what, what I mean? do. I do that. I, I buy them sandwiches. I never. Hardly yeah, I ever usually just give them like bananas say, or something. Like if I have really, groceries hungry? in the car, yeah, whatever are I have, that's extra. Let's go have something to eat. Here, let's go get some juice for you and a sandwich or whatever. Not a problem. And that's the thing. You're right. If you do give money and someone's burning you and I've been conned before I know there was one guy at a scam here where is Korean dude. He's telling everyone, Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm this uh, former Korean soldier and I served in this unit during the war. And I, you know, uh, we saw these, these very, you know, these battles that people really is terrible people losing their lives and horrific this and that. And this is the, is a, is this a, a sob story that he gave everyone going through the train station and it turned out the guy was just, he was a con man. So, but you're right. I mean, even if you, we gave him, gave him 10 bucks and the wife, even at the time kind of warned me. And I said, I don't care, man. It's like, well, give him 10 bucks. Like it's maybe I owe him from a former life or something like that. Yeah. Besides, and besides, like if you can't give somebody $10, then uh, you need to really do some work on like, not necessarily making money, but like rethinking what it is you actually need in the world, you know, like, cause money is just a form of energy. You can always replenish. And if somebody is low on energy in a, a physical, a spiritual, mental sense, and uh, you can help them out in some way. Uh, and you know that you can replenish your energy. I feel like you're really cutting yourself short. If you think that you can't afford to be compassionate, you know, like you're uh, lessening your own power in a way it's, it's like stupid in multiple reasons. It is said that, the first step on the path to wisdom is generosity. That's the first step. Absolutely um, makes sense. I mean, uh, wisdom is the putting into action morality in a sense, like the difference between right and wrong. Wisdom is, you know, putting <laughs> modifying your behavior for that. And so it's always the right thing to do to share and be generous, especially with someone that's in a less fortunate situation. And I say that as somebody that could be so much more charitable than I am. And I'm looking for more ways to do that. And I do want to spend more time in more volunteer capacities, not just give money to things that occasionally, you know, that I see that I believe in. You know, I've been trying to pay it forward on minds and wire others points as often as I feel inspired to, which I'm, you know, trying to cultivate that as well. And, but all in all, I think, if I could just get out of my 40 hour a week job cycle and, you know, have a 
reduced version of what I think I need to survive and, you know, streamline things, uh, throw what's not necessary overboard. But if you want to do more pirate metaphors, I think it would really help my ability to spend my time in a more charitable way. Well, yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's an important part of our lives and uh, the spiritual path. There's also talk of what's known as idiot compassion too, let's not forget. So we got to be careful. And that's all via, of course, the awareness of skillful means and that we have to make decisions and uh, that's where the wisdom comes in. It's like deciding, should I do this or that? What's going on here? What what course of action should we take? What will ultimately produce the most positive and productive uh, results and have the greatest you know impact? So that includes things just like what we're doing right now, speech as well. So uh, action, of course, is a big one, but speaking and thinking is a little more subtle. That's definitely on a more subtle level. Uh, or, you know, and I guess you get into metaphysics and whatnot there. So, uh, but yeah, meditation is really critical too, which for me, I see meditation largely as simply just breathing, mindful awareness of the breath. And so that comes into play when we're doing things like having conversations and putting shows together and interviews and whatnot. And I'm not always perfect and not always on the mark. And that's another one too. Interesting. The word sin simply means to miss the mark. So yeah, unless our speech is perfect, then we're kind of, we're, you know, we're sinning a little bit. We're, we're screwing up, you know, sin kind of, also is the name of an ancient moon goddess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, ISIS. That's been hijacked now, of course, too. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, interesting. Completely. Huh? Interesting, uh, huh? The swastika. Um, they did the same thing with the swastika. Same thing. Yeah, and reversed it so that it would have a negative meaning. If I'm sure a lot of people are probably familiar with that, that the swastika is an ancient spiritual spiritual symbol representing life, not the death that the uh, the Nazis have made it. Into. Some people are really triggered. Some people are still really triggered. I went back to Canada back in a number of years ago, and I had an earring, swastika earring, and this one girl, oh boy, was she ever triggered. It's just, just off a rocker. So I'm, the, part of the reason I was wearing it was to help educate people. I went through customs, and that was quite a story, getting shook down completely, and they brought out the, like, the drug dog and stuff later, all, just a bunch of bullshit. You know, just I, I, every time I fly, which hasn't been now for like the past decade, and there, there's a reason for that, a few reasons, but always get the special line and the special treatment. And so, but I was at the time wearing a, a swastika a necklace and uh, the customs guy who, you know, he's just doing his job. I understand that. Uh, the first guy, the second guy was a dick. I kind of this, this smug kind of, you know, smile on his face. He came out fucking prick um you know with the dog and stuff but the first guy was okay i kind of like whatever man just you know you, you got to i got sent to the special line you got to look through my bags do i do i mind yeah i kind of do actually so <laughs> i'll tell you the truth yeah yeah but they they went through them anyways and of course there's nothing there unless they're going to plant something like well we're just looking for like you know i think they say like child porn or hate literature or something like that I showed him my swastika. He's like, and he actually understood. He's like, no, no, that's a, that's an ancient Indian uh, symbol, a spiritual kind of part of the, like Buddhism and so forth. And that's, that's okay. So, oh, well, thanks. So good. Good for you. You know, so I was kind of, I was kind of, a, uh, I, I kind of dug that respect of the guy cause he actually had that knowledge, you know? So maybe that's part of his job though, too. Who knows? It's definitely not cool how you can be completely, misunderstood by the use of uh, a symbol. I mean, I get that all the time whenever I try to talk to anybody about anarchy, for example, because they have the, the symbol has been corrupted in their mind of that word to make them believe that it means chaos and disorder. When in ra- reality, it just means no rulers, which also means no slaves. So, uh, you know, what? there's a lot of words that have been corrupted by especially in English where the real meaning has been lost. And I find that it's actually difficult to convey ideas to people sometimes because the difference in connotations that people take one word to mean over another 
And even when I try to define terms with somebody before I then lay a foundation and try to build up to a more higher perspective type of argument, they are totally lost by the time I've gotten done explaining basic etymology of something. And that's a problem because we, we were touched on conscience earlier and etymologically that word actually means knowing together. Uh, it's taken from the Latin word schiere, which is to know and con, which is just with or together. So conscience just means knowing together. So if everybody had that inner knowing together of the right meanings of words also, not just basic right from wrong, it would make it a lot easier to communicate and just safely coexist as a human family and maybe even ditch this entire commerce system in general that has everybody so distrustful of one another, like you were describing with uh, people having suspicions about your secret Santa operation, which has absolutely no stance to benefit in any way, shape or form. Oh, big time. That was immediately, that was the reaction I got via blab.im. It's like, oh, what's going on? This is a scam. What kind of fraud, you know, is this that they're trying to perpetuate and promote here? So yeah, so immediately it's it's amazing the way people are just so their default position is suspicion <laughs> of others rather than well wait a minute maybe there's something to this like maybe this is something that I could I could get involved in and be a part of and we can make some good things happen. So yeah, once again just to be clear, we are not taking any money whatsoever. All we are doing is acting as a as a go between or mediator and a matchmaking service with our with our elves that come on board and help to uh, make those connections where they get, you know, the work to put people in contact with one another. So I think I've explained that clearly enough that we don't have to kind of uh, retread or, or hash over things. Once again, the one thing that I will say is that uh, it's a 10 day campaign and we, the, the, what there might be, you could say, honestly, is that, well, you're going to be hearing a lot about WPRPN. <laughs> you know, you're going to be hearing a lot of probably about Interverse and Emily Anderson and uh, everyone else that, that decides to get involved. So she was immediately, that immediately caught her attention. She was very interested. So, I mean, and, you know, all the power to her, you know, good way to go. Like, she, you know, because there are people out there that do get it. And that's awesome because there's a, there, there is a lot of power to that with people collaborating, working together to produce these shared efforts and visions, making them come to life and produce these, you know, positive ends. So really looking forward to things and hoping that we can kind of, you know, take things uh, even a little further from how we managed to, uh, you know, how we managed to do last year. Very cool. I'm curious. We're about at the hour, Mark. Are you interested in sticking around for our plus extension? Oh, is that like your premium content? <laughs> yeah, it's a new thing I'm kicking off just this week, actually, where I'd like to keep people around for a little longer than I have been typically and have early access exclusive bonus length episodes for people who are subscribers on Patreon. That's the way to do it. Exactly. So, yeah, sure. I can definitely... Uh we can hang out and, and shoot the breeze a little more and maybe go into some of the issues of the day or anything to do with the, the you know projects that we have on the go or you know whatever it is you want to talk about. So let me just say though, to let people know, we are offering subdomains network, WPRPN.com subdomains URLs to anyone who would like to subscribe or purchase one for a private or personal profile. They're $15 a year. $5 of that goes directly to charity. The other five to the recruiter or the uh, headhunter, somebody, uh, it's like a commission fee basically. So if you find someone who wants to come on board and join the network, you get five bucks every year for, you know, as long as they stay on. And the other $5, of course, because it's a three-way split, it goes back to the headquarters. People you know, at the Robin Hood to help keep the ship sailing smoothly along. If it's a commercial venture, you're selling merchandise or some product of some kind, it's $60 a year. And once again, the three-way split with $20 going directly to charity, 
wanting to the, uh, the commission end of things, whoever manages to bring that individual or enterprise, whatever it is, on board. And the other 20, of course, goes back to the Robin Hood. So hashtag WWRHD, what would Robin Hood do? And thank you, Jaffe. This has been a great conversation. Um, we'll do it again, and i talk to you soon. Happy sailing, my friend. guys that's it for the free show as always thanks a lot for tuning in and we'd really love to have you uh, join us over on minds.com both jaffe and myself so please check the episode links for both his website and his social media extensions and also interverse on minds where it's a really good way to actually talk to me and get in touch and uh you know Give me some ideas for some upcoming guests. I could really use a few suggestions for December. And if you want to get into a deeper aspect of this conversation, you can join Interverse Plus on Patreon, where you'll get double the length episode uh, content through our Plus extensions that we do now. And in this particular Plus extension, we got into some very juicy topics like why Facebook is evil and controlling, Get uh, Jaffe's reasons for moving out of Canada to South Korea and why he avoids flights and Korea's terrible cultural outlook on plant medicines and a whole lot of conversation about government and mind control programs and ways that people are blind to some really crazy shit that's going on right in front of our eyes. Oh, also a visit from Captain Long John Sinclair. So if you want to get on that, make sure you find the episode link uh, in the notes to patreon.com forward slash interverse where you can jump on the plus extension and check it out and if you do already have a patronage and you need help getting your plus working just shoot me an email or a message somehow and i'll be happy to help you out it isn't too hard but sometimes podcast players are a little confusing so uh thanks for listening much love got a great episode coming next week and uh be good yeah bye bye